بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. So on Friday we were discussing نظرة شهوة casting a glance of desire and lust. There's also other forms of نظرة other glances that we need to safeguard ourselves from. One of them is نظرة احتقار looking at somebody uh, with disdain and looking down upon them this comes about when a person thinks of themselves to be better than somebody else when a person is proud, he has pride inside of him then he looks down upon other people with تحقير, احتقار, this person is low we should never ever do this because why? we do not know what our, our ultimate uh, destiny is are we shaqi or we saeed is our abu jannah or abu jahannam <laughs> we don't know we don't know once a group of people were discussing something and Salman al-Farsi he's from Persia he's not from the Arab Arabs so they were ta- boasting about their lineage so he's uh, maybe mixing two stories up together but he said that my origin <coughs> is I'm from a nutfa a drop of sperm and my ending result I'm going to be a jifa I'm going to be just a dead corpse which the, which the insects are going to eat up that's where I start, that's where I end and between the two of them what do I keep in my stomach? Qadira meaning dirt, filth if you know flesh, nobody wants like disgust everybody so you're born from impurity when you're dead you're going to be impure dirt, filth and in between that time you're carrying filth in your stomach the whole time so who are we talking about, about anybody else? and at the end what happens is then is after that is the main thing Am I, is my destiny Jannah is my destiny Jahannam then once that is determined then I can tell you um, where I stand yes yeah, so one time somebody was um, taking a mic and laughing at one one scholar or one pious person you know laughing at him and this thing he goes who's better that dog or you yeah so he said I can't answer that question right now because if I die with Iman then I can say I'm better than a dog but if I don't die with Iman I don't I'm not Punctually with my, my fara'id, I involve in sins and I'm deprived of iman at time of death, then I said, dog is better than me. So we don't know what that, we don't, we don't know what that was. So this is what we have to do. That when we never ever look upon somebody with a form of disdain that I'm greater than thee, I am better than somebody else. Always remember that we do not know what our final abode is. We do not know if our amal are maqbul. Even if you're doing amal, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We wake up for fajr, we perform five times salah with jama'ah. We are studying knowledge, we, whatever we from taraweeh, we are fasting, so alhamdulillah. But it's always a fear. What's the fear? Is it maqbool or not? It's possible, it's not maqbool. We have iman. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, the greatest ni'mah. But what's the fear? Will it remain till death and, and the last moments? We're not sure of this. Because of our sins, if something happens, we can be deprived of iman. So because of this, should always be. We should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not be ungrateful for our amal or grateful for our iman we always worry and never ever look down upon somebody and the one is you look down upon somebody and similarly we should not conduct ourselves in a way which we, come, we show arrogance we show pride and sometimes we know this and sometimes these uh, manifestations of pride and arrogance are so subtle we don't even realize it as some, as something you may say something you may do the way you may talk the may you may just frown on your face. All of these things kind of manifest that, you know, this person thinks of himself to be a bit. And I was, on the weekend, I was reading one uh, statement, and it's a brilliant statement. So, um, there's one thing in Usul Hadith, Mustalahu Hadith, called Tadlis. So in Tadlis, what happens is, is a person, instead of saying um, that, A'raj narrates from Abu, Hur- Abu, Abu Zina narrates from A'raj, and he narrates from Abu Hurairah, when you go through the whole Sanad, you, ch- you, change, you change his name up. So it sounds a bit different. So it could be different reasons for this. One is want to hide his name because he's a weak narrator. One of them is some teacher trying to test the students to make sure they're, you know, are they thinking or not. So for example, I can say, for example, Muhammad ibn Isa ibn Sawra asked Muhammad ibn Ismail. He's like, oh, who's this? Imam Tirmidhi asked Imam Bukhari. It's simple, isn't it? If I said Imam, if I said Imam Tirmidhi, he said to Imam Bukhari. They said, okay, very simple. If I say they all these big names, it's like, oh. So it could be. I'm trying to test you so you guys are, you should be aware of this. Who's Muhammad Ismail ibn Sawra? Oh yeah, yeah, I know him. Who, when he says Muhammad Ismail, who's he referring to? So the students get. It could also be that I'm showing off. It could also be that I'm showing off in this lecture by learning it from before. Yeah? <laughs> when I'm giving this lecture, it could also be that I'm showing off. 
Yes, that's how the nafs works. So it could be that in class the teacher says this, and he goes. So he says that in, in the qiq, he said there's many reasons that this happens. But he says sometimes this also happens because that the person who's doing this has that inside of him that kind of like show off. That's trying. You know, I know this. So even sometimes you're teaching, and the teacher is like, you know, sometimes the teacher will say this. Oh, I've studied this like 20 years ago in Qudur, You guys don't even know it. It's also a form of ihtiqar, isn't it? That you know. I've, I've studied this like 20 years ago and I remember it, you don't remember what you studied two, two weeks ago. So you shouldn't be like that, see? The way you talk. You may say, for example, somebody has wealth. So just because you have wealth, don't ever belittle somebody who may be poor. You might think, you don't, you don't know what the, you don't, you go to another place. Maybe they do work hard. But maybe it's Allah's taqdeer that they don't. So sometimes oh, I work hard for my wealth. Everybody works hard for their wealth. But sometimes people work even more hard than you. The currency is low. Things happened. They didn't have the, the intelligence that you have. They didn't able to invest the right place to invest. They can't put things together. Their mind doesn't work like this. So it's not, you shouldn't ever think, oh, you know, what was the problem of Qarun? I earned this. I earned it. Whatever I was given, I was given because of my earn. Yes. Allah, sometimes, the truth is, some people are very clever. You have IQ levels. Some people are not clever. They're very, it takes very long for them to understand things. Sometimes they can't understand things. And the Prophet said this, Everybody's akhal is different. Some people are very clever, some people are average, some people are low, some people are very below average. But you should not say, well, okay, no, he's not going to understand this. It's not his capacity. It's fine. But one is like, oh, he's so dumb, so stupid. You know, what he did to the conversations, you believe to somebody, you can say, no, what? Don't, don't get him involved in this mashura because he's not going to be able to input in here. His capacity is not that. That's like a simple statement. Make a gahan, don't you? how much anybody. He's a beogoof. Use words like this. Sometimes in our words, we get a habit of saying things which are, and these words, they kind of show that what is in our heart. And, you know, this is a, a, a spiritual illness which is very, very detrimental because it has very, very great consequences. So never, ever belittle anybody. Whatever you have, remember it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no hawl, no quwwa, no strength, no ability, nothing. Nothing. If you ever think, start thinking, this is mine, I do this, somebody's, you know, they're not grateful, they're not appreciative, they don't work hard, they don't study the exam, you don't know. So everything I have, if I come first in exams, Allahumma lakal hamdu wa lakal shu'uli Allah gave me this IQ level. So Alhamdulillah, I can learn something, I look at it once, twice, and I can learn it. It doesn't mean that you are better than that person who takes two hours to learn something. In business, you're successful in business, you're handsome, you're beautiful, Allah has given you looks. Some people are, some people are very handsome, some people are not. Some people are ugly, they have less beauty. But you didn't, you didn't pick it, you didn't earn this. This is Allah's things. Alhamdulillah, like Alhamdulillah, like Alhamdulillah, like In anything you have, your intellects, your beauty, your, your thing, your success in life. Yes? So you have to remember everything that attributes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And never ever look down upon anybody. Haji Farooq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that he, when he, very young boy, he went to uh, meet Mala Masulullah Khan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi, who was Hazrat Hanif sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his khalifa, his disciple. So he said when he first started uh, connection with Ma'ana uh, Musullah Khan sahab he gave him advice. I come from the second one, but the first advice was The first advice he gave him, the first advice, you know, like, you know, like the first time he come to him, he said, give him some advice. So he said, never ever look at anybody with Nazra to ihtiqar, with looks of disdain, don't be condescending upon anybody, don't look down upon anybody. First advice, why? Because this is detrimental. Yes, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزُوا الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ The same Allah that give, He can take away. Yes, and I just finished off with one story, I mentioned it before, there's not sanad for this story, but it's mentioned in the Al-Mustatraf, Fi Kulli Al-Mustatraf, Fi Kulli Mustatraf, Fi Kulli Fanni Mustatraf, something like that, it's a book like that. So in there He mentions, He says, that one person, one hand, there was a person, uh, he was eating dinner and a pauper came and he knocked, he came out the door to beg for some food. So when he came to beg for some food, um, the, the husband and wife were eating, the husband got really cheesed off and he just, you know, shouted at him, you don't work, you're lazy, you're full hand, you're begging, what are you, chucked him out. So the husband came back and was, you know, said to the wife, what happened? So he told, she told her what happened. And then eventually something happens, um, um, started having some problems with husband and wife, something happened, poverty, thing, divorce, and they ended up being divorced and the husband will become very, very poor. You following? Uh, then this woman, she got married again. So husband, first husband, divorced and became very, very extremely poor. And the first wife got married again. 
So she was having dinner with her second husband. Someone knocked on the door, a poor person. So a person knocked on the door, so the husband came back, the second husband came back, and he had tears in his eyes. He got some food from the table, he went outside, and he gave it, and he came back inside, and he sat on the table, started to cry. So what happened? He said, that, that person who came, knocked on the door. That was your first husband. The person who came to knock on the door to beg for food. That was your first husband. And you may not know me, but uh, at one point in time, I came to knock on, the, on, on your door. And that same husband of yours, he, he dealt me very badly. And after that, I got a good break, investment, business, and I got myself a thing, and I got married to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, تُؤْتِلْ مُلْكَ مِنْ دَشَاءَ وَتَنَزُلْ مُلْكَ مِنْ دَشَاءَ Allah can flip things anytime. Today you're healthy, then you're young, you think, oh, I've got everything. Who's going to tell me anything? Just one kidney stone. In your kidneys, one kidney stone, you're on the ground, on the floor, muhtaj, needy. Sometimes you're walking, everything, just in your neurons, slight imbalance. What happens? You keep falling down. You can't do anything. You think, imagine, imagine you're walking around with all, you know, you think you're big, done and everything, and one day you get diarrhea. And you don't get to the toilet on time. What happens? All your ease is gone. No? So anything can happen. It might seem funny, but it's a truth reality. You think, oh, you're walking around, I'm big done, I'm the boss of the thing, nobody can say anything to me, I got the most, you know, the way I look. One little thing happens. Izzah is gone, your honor is gone. Anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, that's why they say in Urdu, Allah ki shani bi niyazi sada darati raha karo. Allah is ghani anil alameen. Doesn't need anybody. Anything. So you wear new clothes, what the Prophet said, dua. Don't be fakhr. That, oh, look at this. Clothes, eat day, new clothes, brilliant, how I look. Itar, imama, jubba, jeans, t-shirt, whatever dress you have, handbag, well, I don't know what you wear. Because what I said, Alhamdulillah illati kasani. So Alhamdulillah, Allah is the one who gave this to me. Look in the mirror, you know, say, I'm the next best thing since sliced bread. You say, Alhamdulillah, Allahumma ahsanta khalqi. Wallah, you have beautified. Even the Prophet is bringing attention. Allahumma ahsanta khalqi. It is you who has given me this form that I have. And more importantly, it's inside, it's still, it's still imperfect. Fa'asin khuluqi. See the Prophet is changing our mind, direction. So always stay humble. And what Prophet Allah says, Man tawadha alillah, rafa'ahullah. If you are humble, you're down to earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then elevate you in this dunya and in the hereafter. Waman takabbara, who tries to be lofty, high, act proud and arrogant, wada'ahullah, Allah will disgrace him and humiliate him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill in us these good characteristics and save from these evil characteristics. Subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi kum wa shadu Allah ilaha illa anta nasaqfi wa bantu wa ilaika.